Yo, what's up guys? So we're back with another Star Wars reaction video. If you're new channel, welcome. So we're going to be checking out another video about Marco Ragnos. I tried to check out this video earlier today, but they started, you know, like mowing the lawn and the leaf blowers and everything. So <laughs> I didn't want that caught in the audio. But anyways, I did watch one video before this, the story of Marco Ragnos, and it was a lot more familiar than I, than I thought. He was the one who gave Exar Kun the mark on his forehead and also proclaimed him Dark Lord the Sith and how he has very strong force powers uh, that which makes up for his abilities in lightsaber and sword combat <laughs> however um what really stood out was he was never um challenged and he was uh, really loved and never betrayed so which is pretty unusual because that's basically the whole concept of the sith that's what leads to civil wars and uh, apprentices killing masters because the strong will always be there and another one is what really stood out to me was the fact that this Sith Lord can actually give the force to those who are non-sensitive. That just blew my mind. So this man could just could create force wielders uh, as many as you want just if he just want to. So that was crazy. But anyways, we're going to check out uh, why Marco Ragnos is the only Sith never to be challenged. And shout out and credit goes to Stupendous Wave for the video. So with that, anything else? Let's jump into the video. So you have returned, Acolyte of the Force. Good. This is just as I have foreseen it. You have returned because <laughs> you wish to know more about the Sith that have come before us. Their power and greatness echoes through the waves of time and transcends the pages of history. It was upon their foundations that the Sith have grown to be what they are now. Long ago, this foundation began with the Golden Age of the Sith, which was ushered in by the one and only Marka Ragnos, one of the original Sith Emperors. We have mentioned this powerful Sith Lord many times in recent videos, but have yet to actually cover him entirely and get a good sense of just how powerful Wait, the one in the middle, is someone carrying his sword for him? Marka Ragnos is praised by the Sith both old and new alike, with many Sith Lords of the past deeming him the greatest who has ever lived. Ragnos seems to have escaped the traitorous fate that many Sith Sith would normally have. He is also one of the least criticized Sith Lords in galactic history. Many Sith have their gripes about those that have come before them, but even the rule of two Sith seem to regard Marka Ragnos as one of the finest emperors to come from their order. This is the kind of reverence and deeply rooted respect that you cannot buy, especially from the Sith of all beings. So what made Marka Ragnos so significant and great? Although we don't have much information on his lore, let's take a look at what we do know and find out exactly why Marka Ragnos is always held in such high regard. First though, let's explore his history. Marka Ragnos was a human-Sith hybrid that was a direct descendant of the original Dark Jedi from the Second Great Schism. Although we aren't told which Dark Jedi he descended from, we speculate that it may have even been their leader, Ajun Tapal. During his lifetime, Marka Ragnos acted with shrewdness and cunning, pitting all of his adversaries against one another while he rose up within the ranks of the Sith. Once he secured his position as That's the pretty good of the Sith people, he began expanding the Empire until it covered over 200 systems in the Outer Rim. Marka Ragnos was exalted by the Sith people, and they seemed to not only love him, but graciously accepted his ironclad rule. He was certainly the strongest of any Sith, and as far as we know, only one was brave enough to challenge his throne. A Sith man that goatee looking of thing Simis kind of makes it look like um, something Ragnos, from an Egyptian but pharaoh. It resulted in Simis being decapitated through the powers of Sith alchemy and magic throw. Simis managed to live, and he constructed his head in a crystal that was carried by his servant. Marka Ragnos apparently admired Simis for his strength in using magic to survive, rather than this being his final death. And for this, Simis was promoted to being Ragnos's personal advisor, as well as held a very high position in court. When Marka Ragnos caught wind of a 13-year-old boy by the name of Tenebrae, who was so powerful that he had completely conquered his home planet, it was Ragnos who made it official by making the boy the ruler of that system, and providing him oh. with a library of magic Sith knowledge. This boy would go on to become Darth Vicious, 13 years old. Many of you acolytes oh, are very familiar with. I think this might have been one of the reasons that Marka Ragnos was so beloved. When he saw real strength, he acknowledged and rewarded it. He oppressed the weak and kept them under his foot as slaves to build the empire, and rewarded the strong for breaking their holds and accomplishing true greatness. But as we all know, Sith don't exactly respect just fairness. A Sith loyalty isn't free and has to be bought with blood. These people only respect one thing and one thing only. That is strength. 
So how strong truly was Mark Aragnos, the most beloved of all Sith? His tales of greatness unfortunately don't go into any real detail as to what his powers in the Force were, nor his skill with the blade. All we know is a handful of things he has accomplished, but they are large enough to where we can get a pretty decent gauge of the scope of Mark Aragnos' true power. Ragnos did three distinct things that we can talk about, which all wrap into his amazing amount of knowledge concerning Sith sorcery. Mark Aragnos created two artifacts, a pair of gauntlets and a scepter, as well as accomplished the power to appear as a Sith spirit. At his funeral, Mark Aragnos appeared in his spirit form, which shocked oh, yeah, all of I those who were this present, last video. including his successor, Naga Sadat. This tells us that Mark Aragnos was one of the first Sith to actually accomplish this. Of course, we know that the Dark Jedi... Bro, can you imagine, Pal, like, as well it's as your Tarnus funeral Earth and you attend it? <laughs> spirit. However, it doesn't seem as though they really made contact with the Sith people following. Karnas Mer's spirit was bound to his talisman, and he was more or less enslaved to it. Ajunta Pal's melancholy spirit wandered his tomb until he entirely forgot who he was. So on this level, I would be bold enough to say that Mark Aragnos was the first Darksider to perfect becoming a Sith spirit. A feat which uh, yeah, he is not did that to that can easily Exo happen Kuhn for a Darksider, uh, Yulik especially Keldroma. a Sith. Ragnos sort of paved the way for this ability to where other Sith Lords such as Nani Sadao, <clears throat> Freed and Nad, and Exar Kun could accomplish it later. With it still being extremely rare and extremely difficult. The two artifacts he created also gives us a good idea of his power range. While this hasn't exactly been made official, what our researchers have noticed when it comes to Sith enhanced items is that the power of the artifact usually reflects the power scope of its creator. Simply put, the stronger the maker, the stronger the item. This only makes sense as we have seen only the strongest artifacts stand the test of time, and strong Marco Ragnos's artifacts were. The first one is the pair of gauntlets, which are said to greatly increase the force powers of the wearer. This may not be too special on its own, as many Sith objects and talismans were made to yield the exact same effect. However, the power of Ragno shines when we take a closer look at his scepter which might possibly be one of the most powerful items in all Star Wars lore. The Scepter had the ability to literally siphon Force energy from beings and places like Darth Nihilus did. However, the Scepter stored all the power inside of That's it. That's a cool looking weapon too. In that big ass medallion he's got on. For it could actually bestow a regular being Force sensitivity instantly granting them the power level of a Jedi Padawan, and a power that they could then cultivate to mastery. No other object, or even being in Star Wars, has ever claimed to wield power like this, and granting the very ability to give those the Force. Many millennia after, a cult to Ragnos got their hands on the scepter and began giving their members force powers while gathering all the energy from dark side nexuses around the galaxy in order to perform a ritual to resurrect Marka Ragnos. This is how deep Marka Ragnos's reign went within the people. They loved him enough to attempt to bring him back from the dead, an occult that had nothing to do with the Sith beyond Ragnos. This process was almost successful as the leader, Axmas, unleashed the power of the scepter to summon the spirit of Marka Ragnos, the spirit who then possessed his body. If not for the combined efforts of the Jedi Knight Jaden Kor and Master Kyle Katarn, Marka Ragnos would have returned, the ultimate Sith. The Jedi, though, managed to destroy the scepter, which banished his spirit and also took with it all the force sensitivity that the cultists gained. Now, obviously, Marka Ragnos was weakened by being in the body of a being lesser than he. Otherwise, it is hard to imagine anyone stopping him. From what we can gather, Marka Ragnos was a being of exceptional power that likely had total mastery over dark side magic and Sith alchemy. Yeah, so no one could like rival him to acquire in God -like force abilities. And having the ability to bestow force potential onto someone. Perhaps even the beginnings See? of midichlorian manipulation that Darth Plagueis would later become fascinated by. Marka Ragnos is so incredibly rare as a Darksider, because not only was he universally praised and loved, he died of apparent natural causes of old age, his spirit living on afterwards, and there have been very little, if any, Sith Lords that have any critique for Marka Ragnos, having nothing but absolute reverence for this Sith Emperor. But my friend, what do you think of this terrifying and yet beloved Dark Lord? How do you imagine his power lines up with the rest of the Sith that we know in Star Wars lore? We hope you like these Legends lore character breakdowns, and if you want to see more just like this one, comment down below who you'd like to see explored in a later video. Until next time, my friend, may the Force be with you, and have a great day.
All right, there you guys have it. So that was uh, why Marco Ragnos is the only Sith never to be challenged. And yeah, I mean, uh, his ability in the Force is pretty much unmatched, so, which is why uh, he had such like a uh, power over others. And what uh, what I noticed and what I heard was keep the weak oppressed, but keep the uh, strong rewarded and loved uh, and loved as uh, by you. So th uh, that way, um, when so that way. Uh, with the weak oppressed there will be no rebellion and with the weak i mean not weak <laughs> with the strong uh, uh loving you then there's no reason to rebel i mean because you keep on rewarding them with great things i mean what he did for a vitiate man uh wow you did great okay here you're the ruler of the planet here's a library too <laughs> but it was crazy but uh, marco ragnos like i said i've heard the name and I'm starting to remember a few things like what he did for Exar Kun and Ula Keldroma, but I didn't know it went into this extent of what he did. So it is crazy. And the fact that I never knew that he was a Sith Lord, I mean not Sith Lord, Sith Emperor. I didn't know he was an Emperor. I thought he was just a really powerful Sith Lord. So man, thank you so much for the recommendation guys. If you did not tell me this, I would have definitely missed this. Wow. Uh, I mean, I'm just... Uh, I don't know what else to say because his story is amazing, his abilities and everything. Uh, one thing that is mentioned is his ability in wielding a lightsaber or sword is not as extraordinary as his force abilities. But then again, we can't be good at everything. Everyone's at least good at one thing. Someone's good at lightsaber combat, another's good at the force abilities. That I understand. Like, look at the Jedi. If your lightsaber is blue, your lightsaber combat is great. If your lightsaber is green, then your force abilities are great. Kind of like that. So. I do understand that. But anyways, thank you guys for watching. Thank you so much for the recommendation about Marco Ragnos. I really do appreciate it. If you guys have any other videos you guys want me to check out, please let me know. I was thinking about diving a little bit more into uh, Vitiate, Darth Vitiate, the Sith Emperor, because I know him just a little bit from those old Republic trailers and his name being mentioned here and there and how he's so powerful, but I never really got into depth with him. So I might actually look into him, but uh, we're going to see what happens. Oh, uh, happens if I can find some videos about him or not. But anyways, thank you guys for watching. Thank you so much for the recommendation. As always, I really do appreciate it. Hit that notification bell so you know when I drop another video. And thank you so much for your support, guys. I really do appreciate it. Until then, I'll see you guys next time.